Hi dog people, welcome to another tag video. As I promised yesterday, this week is predominantly going to be tags. Tags that I meant to do in the past, ages ago, and just didn't do. Today's tag is going to be Edward Insane's most BJD tag, or the most BJD tag. I actually found this tag not through um, Edward and Saint. By the way, totally nice screen name. That's such a good fucking name. <laughs> I actually found this tag through one of Ann Picaro's old videos. I wanted to do this tag mainly because I feel like I've got some interesting answers. So let's go. The first question right off the bat, who is or has been most difficult? Ann's down the most difficult doll I've had to deal with and is no longer here because of that would have to be my estranged April House Rex. I'm happy he's gone. He was um he was a pain in the ass. With my dolls, I don't tend to give them like these elaborate characters, but I do tend to give them small shards of myself. And the, the piece of myself that I gave to Rex was my selfishness. Very much like conceited, always needs to be acknowledged attention whore. I gave him all of those attributes and I made him a model which just amped up all those attributes and it just made him harder to deal with as a doll. He just wasn't here for it. He needed it to be from like some other artist way on the other side of the fucking planet. So he gone. The BJD that I think of the most. Who do you think of the most? Probably any of my you know of. Probably Ray. There you go. So this is the faceplate. I'm sure you guys have seen at least once or twice or a million times over. I frequently think about Ray and specifically this face up. Um, right now she's using her loosest faceplate. This is my girl Ray. She's using the loosest faceplate right now. But uh, look at her. Stunning. Stunning. Just beautiful. Yeah, she's pretty important to the point where I shelled out another 300 and something dollars to get her another you know a body. Yeah, and almost all my faceplates that I've purchased up until recently has all been for Ray's benefit. So. Yeah. Who's most likely to be reshelled? My my dolls don't tend to take on original character personas or identities. When I give them characters, it just takes on a whole nother life and I can't keep up. <laughs> but if there were a doll that I would like to reshell and have like that whole feeling that the doll brought to me back, I do have an answer for that. I got rid of my fallen doll Rabby in light gray skin and he was so cute. His name was Carrot Cake. I just called him Carrot. I would love to get him back, but I would prefer him in white skin. Yeah. So he would be reshelled. Who's most time consuming? Hmm. Who's most time consuming? I spent a lot of time making things for almost all my dolls except all those Monchichis. <laughs> my Monchichis are pretty much happy with whatever the fuck I bring them, if I bring them anything. Uh, whereas every doll in this house at some point has had me sewing, crocheting, painting, something, something. So I spend a lot of time. But what doll has taken up the most time? Maybe Ray, again? Who's the most expensive? 
This girl right here would be my You Know Is Zero Latea or Ladia, I don't know how to pronounce her name. And she's had a face up by me. She's so pretty. She's so pretty. She's so pretty. Um, and she costed me. She cost me a lot of money. I had her on layaway for like what six fucking months. She she was a lot. She was a lot. But she's here, and I gladly paid the amount to get her because. Unless I'm mistaken, and I would love to be corrected if I'm mistaken, but the Unoa Zeros aren't offered up for sale a lot at all. They're pretty hard to get. So when my really sweet friend on Flickr offered her to me, I jumped at the, the oh, she's so pretty. I jumped at it. I just had to because, I mean, look at that. She's so pretty. Yeah, she's she's special. She's special. She really is. I uh, I'm, I keep calling her Ray because like I keep talking about Ray, so I keep calling her Ray. But I uh, was the very first, you know, a zero or you know it in general that I'd ever seen way back when when I was getting into BJDs in 2008. So. Not only having the option to purchase a doll that was already hard to get, but to purchase the one that kind of drew me into the whole you know world was a pretty big deal for me. So I gladly paid a good amount for her. <laughs> Who's most laid back? You know what? My most laid back doll. <laughs> my most laid back doll is my orange tea doll Paulette. Like she her chill game is a fucking one and I love her so much like she's the perfect doll to hang out with the perfect doll to take places she gets enough attention but she doesn't she's not like overbearing she loves everything I make for her she's just she's so late yeah she's so laid back and I think that's the best part about her other than all the beautiful sculpting and her really expressive face and like everything with her is so minimalistic yet really really dynamic and I just love that doll so much like I'll show you her this is my orange tea doll Paulette and she cute look at look at her she's so expressive so expressive she's really happy in everything I put her in this is actually I can't I can't make out what that is saying right now but I got this off a of teddy bear from a thrift store the weekend that Summer and Libby and Amy came up and the reason I got it was because I knew it would fit her and she'd be you know happy with it and this is a hat that I made I actually made this for my Amore doll but my Amore doll was like no so she gladly put it on her noggin because she doesn't like wigs i actually think i might give her like a caesar and do like baby hairs because she doesn't like wearing wigs so i feel like i'll just blush her 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 head cap to be like black or something just to give her the illusion of hair kind of like live dolls have and she'll just be happy with that because she she has wigs but she much prefers being like this with no wig and I love that too yeah this doll she's yeah who owns the most stuff I know who has a lot of stuff jewelry this little man is jewelry <laughs> um he's a let's baby doll Daisy the company face up he's so sweet he really is like right now he's wearing one of Tachibana's outfits that I made him um Tachibana probably isn't really happy about that but whatever. um yeah he owns a lot of stuff definitely I bought him a good amount of eyes he has two heads this is uh this is a head that I bought separate from the one that I got him on. And the other one has a different face up and everything. So, um, he owns a lot of stuff just because he was the doll that 
I connected with so much that actually made me learn a new skill. So, yeah, this guy. He's so cute. Who do you miss the most? I would probably say my second Adori that I owned. His name was Chester, and I, I would endearingly call him Cheshire. Because he had the sweetest smile, and he was just the gentlest little doll. I mean, my other Haru casting Adori, who's in tan skin, that I got from Libby Wino and Dollies. He's pretty special and I've bonded with him and like his bond is cemented and everything. But the other one had just such a different energy that exuded from him. And I have the opportunity of giving him back. The person I sold him to offered him back to me and I currently can't right now because I'm currently paying layaways and shit. But the moment, the moment I can. I probably will. Who has had the most incarnations? I don't think any of my doll has had. Nope, that's not true. That's not true. And this also kind of ties into, <laughs> this also kind of ties into that last, that last question. Uh, who do I miss the most? And who has had the most incarnations? Okay. I love the Leak World art body, both the MSD version and the USD versions. Like, I just, I just love it. It's so cute. Um, and I, I also really like almost all of the face sculpts from Leak World as well. So, I have purchased three of the USD. Leak World bodies. Well, Leak World dolls. I think the first one was Chloe. The second one was... Oh no, I think the first one was something else and the second one was Chloe. I'm not sure. I can't remember their names. But I've purchased them... Um, no, not three times. I've purchased the USD version twice and I've purchased the MSD version as well. And if I were to want to get them back, the MSD was nice, but I actually found her to be boring for some reason. I hate saying that. I really hate saying that because she was a beautiful doll and I love the hybrid that I created. Uh, but she was so easily forgotten. Like she would sit on the shelf and I wouldn't really think about her for months at a time. So selling her didn't feel terrible and I actually kept the head which is Jory's second head. The USD art body specifically the body because I can put any head on it and be happy that's been here twice and it'll happen again I have a feeling I have a feeling because like the it's just how do you not and it, it almost seems like every time I see the body or the doll I'm in a financial place where I can do it so I just like grab it because why not why not why not? Which would make you wonder, why the fuck do I keep selling it? Who's the most complete? Okay, if you're talking about complete as in they've got all, they've all got clothes and shoes and wigs and face ups and stuff. If that's how you're talking, then all of my dolls are complete except Dumpling. Dumpling will not accept a fucking face up from me. I feel like he wants to be sent off, but my artist ego is like, yo ass ain't going nowhere. And the last, but certainly not the least, who's the most like me? Yes. Yeah, that, that feels sufficient. Just because all my dolls are somewhat like myself. Like I said in the beginning or a few times in this video, I give them shards of my own personality. So all of them as a collective just reflects me. But a really nice mention, especially considering I learned about this tag through Ann Picaro, Another doll that actually wasn't my doll that I connected with so well was actually the Willow Tree. 
that was given to me by Ann Picaro. Give me a second. This lovely lad is my bat chicks Orf Orpheus. I'm trying to get his hair out of his face. Come on, guy. He likes his hair in his face, but I really want you guys to see this beautiful face that they ended. Uh, but this is my Bacchus Orpheus, Orpheus, given to me by Ann Picaro two years ago, or maybe last year, last year, at the BJD retreat. Um, so yeah, I mean, the question is, what doll is most like me? It's hard to explain. His position in Anne's story, which is a beautiful story, by the way. You definitely should go and give it a listen if you haven't already. His position, I feel like I've been before, where you've kind of been thrusted into a situation and you don't really know what the fuck. Like, things are happening to you, changes are happening, and just being in that place of not being certain kind of like the floor is falling underneath you and you're in a free fall i've been in that place and i connected with that and i connected with the story specifically it just made sense miss miss emily's school of excellence that's the story um so he's he represents a lot he represents my love for everything and does um, he represents creativity. He represents overcoming something. And the fact that she gave him to me at the retreat in person and she explained why she gave him to me was just, that makes him super duper special. Super special. Super special. And look at him. He just looks so dapper. He's so dapper. Like, he has to be dapper. I mean, he's the king of the fae. Come on. I'm sorry. Not the king of elves. He's the king of fairy. Fairy I call fae, right? No, I feel like fae is elves. Right? 